recent years, we witnessed increasing movements of population in Europe and beyond. This leads to new challenges in education. In particular, how to create a safe and inclusive environment for students whose lives have been abandoned, who need to learn new educational systems and may not even speak the same language. Because no child should be left behind, Scientix and Cisco have partnered to create the Education Resilience in Europe initiative. The purpose, first, identifying the main challenges that teachers face when integrating immigrant students, and second, supporting educational projects that promote a culture of diversity as well as develop resilience among students. The projects target different age groups and subjects. They develop such skills as digital literacy, problem solving and critical thinking. These projects have developed knowledge and resources for teachers that can be easily used and replicated in your classroom. And now, a word from our founder. Within Europe, um, as it is throughout the world, there are many populations of individuals seeking new opportunities and seeking um, new, new areas to live and immigrate throughout the world. And that there are many barriers to accessing quality education throughout the world. Primarily among those are separations by language, culture, geography, or access to a trained teacher, um, and the digital divide. Cisco Systems is, is committed to moving forward with initiatives that help bridge those divides. This investment with European Schoolnet was critical because it enabled European Schoolnet to do what it does best in its mission, which is to engage teachers throughout Europe and other member countries that participate in the European Schoolnet network. It also allows Cisco Systems as an industry partner and in this public-private partnership to grow and grow benefits for um, the countries that are involved as well in the collaboration with ministry officials um, and others to bring together the entire stakeholder community to help um, teachers, classrooms, and most importantly, students at the center um, achieve an educational goal, achieve STEM educational outcomes, and to be able to move forward and to be productive and contribute in the societies wherever they may be. From our research, it's clear that adapting teaching methods and materials to meet immigrant students' needs is difficult, but digital tools can bridge the language barrier and can facilitate the integration of students from different backgrounds. In addition, it's important for teachers to get guidance and support on how to navigate through complexities of integrating immigrant students. In light of those findings, Education Resilience in Europe initiative has selected the range of projects that offer digital tools and guidance to support teachers. Let's learn more about United by Coding and the activities they created for students to learn block-based programming. The goal of the project was to make students that are migrating throughout the Europe forget a little bit about their social obstacles and focus on projects they were doing with their classmates. Collaboration helps students integrate in their new classes, in their new environment. Game-based learning really helps students to focus on their goal. They forget a little bit about what they need to do and in that way uh, they are more relaxed, uh, they learn a bit more uh, and this really proved to be an effective uh, way of learning. We are working a lot with block-based programming and uh, there is a visual aspect uh, to block-based uh, programming and also a visual aspect of working with new knowledge, new uh, curriculum. So new students that are coming to new countries, uh, moving uh, throughout uh, the Europe, they get a little bit discouraged by new languages. And when you have a visual aspect, you, are, uh, you can uh, interact from get-go. So you can interact with the project, you can see what others are doing, uh, you can see the colors, you can see the shapes, uh, and this really helps you focus on uh, assignment. And because students were really more relaxed in using our project, uh, they started to learn new words. It, it was really exciting to hear the positive feedbacks. Teachers reported that uh, 
before the project, uh, all the students wanted to be with their friends. Afterwards, they were already so accustomed to this uh, type of working that this was just one of the things uh, they were uh, comfortable with and it really helped with the, for the project. Also, uh, what was really exciting that new friends uh, emerged from this project. Uh, teachers reported that they were greeting each other in the hallways, uh, wanting to do more assignments. And this was really something that was really great to hear uh, because this is what, why we were there, why we started this project. Now it's time for FISA-IQ for Diversity, who will tell you more about the FISA-IQ junior application they have developed to support inquiry-based science education. Uh, FISA-IQ uh, is, uh, is, a, is an app that has been created in order to help uh, students uh, uh, do better science and, and learn science uh, more uh, uh, more intuitively by uh, conducting experiments. Uh, but we wanted to know whether this type of, uh, of app, this type of software, could also help uh, children coming from, uh, from migration uh, to, uh, to better uh, integrate within their new world and, uh, and also to learn science more effectively. We developed some resources on sound. One of them is, uh, is called uh, Tubular Melodies to, to produce a specific uh, a song uh, using a uh, test tube and, uh, and a bit of water. Uh, we developed another uh, uh, other resources like the one on, uh, which is called uh, uh, Tunes, uh, Colors and Smell of My Own Land, which was uh, really dedicated to, to migrant children and helped them to convey what, uh, what their home country was like. The first one is really, uh, it's about the language. Uh, these children often don't speak uh, don't speak the language, or right? it will take a bit of time for them to acquire completely the language. And so, the digital tools are, are very good at that because you can use uh, any language, or it's very easy to translate and to switch from one language to another. The second thing which we which, which was confirmed, we knew about that, but we it confirmed to us that having group activities help also bridge the differences. And maybe the last one is. Uh, is the need for uh, for specific resources and, and good practice when when uh, uh, when dealing with this uh, with this challenge? And you know, the, always the best feedback is when you ask the teachers, uh, "Would you recommend this app to others?" And uh, and in all cases, they, they they told me, "Well, Christoph, we've already recommended this app to uh, to, to our teachers in, inside the school." So so uh, for, for that uh, for that purpose, we we know that this is a useful tool uh, for uh, for this kind of, of situation. Finally, let's hear from Visual Mathematical Dictionary to understand how the dictionary works and what kind of downloadable materials were created to support math teachers and students. What is a visual dictionary? It's not a dictionary in the common sense with a list of words ordered from A to Z, but it's more like a gallery in which each word is illustrated by a picture. And these are mathematical words, so you can imagine that some word of geometry is illustrated by a geometrical figure, while uh, more abstract words, for example from algebra, they are illustrated with an example. For example, if you have a polynomial, how can you draw a polynomial? You just have an image where you have one polynomial. And this is all language independent, so our pictures and images contain no words. And with these pictures, with this gallery, we created a visual dictionary. So the main outcome of the project is an interactive website with the galleries of pictures with the words thematically sorted. This is very important. The words are sorted by teams into chapters. There is section geometry and then the various chapters like polygons, angles, and, and so on. We also produced 12 uh, classroom posters. So these are posters meant for primary school. And these are posters without words, also to favor the language inclusion. We got very favorable responses from educators, even from some mathematical societies. So we really got some enthusiastic emails. So I am positive that 
the existence of this website will be spread through various societies and it will reach the, the people that it has to reach, so namely the, the students in the end. Thanks and stay tuned for episode 2 where we will tell you more about the importance of training courses for teachers. <laughs>